From the big cities to the small towns, Americans of all types drink Bud Light, a light beer that claims to be for everyone. But now, that's being put to the test. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. This is Lesson 577, so you can find the transcript and the full lesson resources at plainenglish.com slash 577. Coming up today, National Beer Day in America was April 7th, 2023. But executives at America's biggest brewer had other things on their mind that day. A firestorm of negative media attention was starting to consume Bud Light, the most popular beer in America. Kid Rock, the musician, had just shot a case of Bud Light with a gun, using an expletive to clarify that he hates the brand. So what exactly went wrong at Bud Light? In the second half of the lesson, I'll show you how to use the English phrasal verb blow over, and we have a song of the week selected by JR. Let's get going. Americans drink a lot of beer. In the last 20 years, craft and artisanal beer has gained market share as consumers experiment with higher quality and more complex flavors. Liquor and canned cocktails are also gaining in popularity. But by far, the biggest sellers are the light lagers produced by large brewers. Bud Light, Coors Light, Miller Light, Budweiser, Bush Light, Natural Light, these are the brands that fill the coolers at the liquor stores and gas stations. They're in the kegs at college parties. They're the best sellers at stadiums, parades, and music festivals. And they're the most common choice at summer barbecues. Beer brands are known for their branding and commercials. They are popular on billboards, they're constantly on television, and lately they have been advertising on social media. Like many brands, brewers are looking to reach consumers where they are and in ways they want to interact with companies. Increasingly, that is on social media. And in addition to paid advertising, brands partner with influencers to reach younger consumers. This presents a reputational risk to marketers. A television ad can be carefully scripted, vetted with focus groups, and approved by layers of executives. That ad can run hundreds or even thousands of times and reach millions of people. Obviously, not every commercial is a success, but brands can carefully control their message in a small number of high-leverage commercials and campaigns. Influencer marketing is different. Influencer marketing is effective because it seems authentic. Don't get me wrong. Influencer marketing is not fully authentic. But it does seem that way. And it seems that way because influencers work brand messaging 
into their own words, into their own personalities, into their own homes and their own lives. And this is why influencer marketing is effective. But for precisely that reason, it's harder for brands to control the message. And influencers, even the biggest ones, don't have the same coverage as television. So brands with an influencer strategy have to work with a lot of influencers to get the same exposure as they'd get with a single commercial. This magnifies the risk to the brand's reputation. Because there are more influencer deals, not every deal can get the same amount of internal scrutiny as a television commercial can. If not every partnership can get the same scrutiny as a commercial, then influencer marketing can more easily get off message. AB InBev, which owns Bud Light, partnered with a transgender TikTok star called Dylan Mulvaney. She started her TikTok channel last year to document her gender transition. She recently celebrated her first full year as a woman. Bud Light sent her a can with her face on it, and they partnered with her on a promotion. There's a university basketball tournament every spring called March Madness. Madness means like craziness. It's an exciting tournament. Dylan Mulvaney made a funny video in which she learns that March Madness is a sporting event and not just the name for the crazy month of March. She promoted Bud Light, saying it's great to drink whether you like basketball or not. The video was cute, endearing, and positive. AB InBev executives were trying to reach new consumers and continue to tap into the massive $1 trillion buying power of LGBTQ consumers in America. They wanted to improve the brand's image so that it's not as associated with binge drinking, and college parties. They wanted Bud Light to be seen as an inclusive brand, as a brand for everyone, and this seemed like a good way to do that. To put it mildly, not all Bud Light drinkers saw it that way. Transgender visibility and rights are currently the center of a cultural rift in America. On the right, many people believe that they are being forced to accept a redefinition of gender that they don't agree with. States are passing laws to curtail drag shows and limit the discussion of sexuality in schools. On the left, many believe that the rights of trans people are being denied. And with the Dylan Mulvaney partnership, the most popular beer brand in America stepped right into one of the hottest cultural controversies of the day. Right-wing consumers, especially in the heartland, stopped buying Bud Light and AB InBev products. They said they didn't want their beer brand to tell them what it means to be a man or a woman. Kid Rock shot up the cans of Bud Light, and in case there was any doubt about what he thought, 
he raised his middle finger to the camera. Travis Tritt, a country musician, said Bud Light wouldn't be sold on his tours. Consumers started shifting away from Bud Light. Bar owners stopped serving Bud Light in their bars. Some did it on principle. Others did it because it was simply not selling. Beer distributors, who don't even work for AB InBev, they were being verbally abused as they drove around in trucks with Budweiser logos. AB InBev issued a tepid non-apology. In the statement, they didn't mention the campaign directly, but they said they recognize their commitment to be the beer for all Americans. Right-wing critics said the apology didn't go far enough. But the LGBTQ community saw it differently. They thought AB InBev had abandoned them. Many appreciated the original promotion with Dylan Mulvaney, and they were looking for a brand to stand up for them, to stick by them when the going got tough, to defend them against unfair attacks. Instead, they said, AB InBev cut and run. So now, it seems like everyone hates Bud Light. Sales of the brand in April were down over 20%, while rivals Miller Light and Coors Light got a nice bump. AB InBev suspended two marketing executives over the controversy and said it would reorient its marketing towards sports and music using the tagline, easy to drink, easy to enjoy. This will probably blow over. Recent history of brand controversy and boycotts suggests that this won't last. People get all worked up for a month or two, and then they quietly slip back into their old habits. For all the people who stop buying a product because of politics, another group will start buying that product. Besides, it's hard to avoid all AB InBev products. They have over 100 beer brands. One Republican congressman proudly took a picture of the inside of his fridge, proving to his right-wing constituents that he had shifted away from Bud Light. Just one problem. His fridge was stocked with Carback, a Texas brewery that's owned by the same company as Bud Light. This just makes you wonder if, in the age of cultural polarization, if any brand can be for all Americans. I bet the people at McDonald's and Starbucks and Coca-Cola are taking careful notes. Time is running out to join the Plain English Chat GPT Challenge. It starts on Monday, June 5th. That's just a few days from now, from when this lesson comes out. You won't be able to join after June 5th. That's because this is a challenge that we're all going to be doing at the same time. We're all going to be working through the activities together. That includes me. That includes JR. And we're going to have a lot of fun together starting on Monday, June 5th. So make sure you're included in the fun. 
visit plainenglish.com slash GPT and sign up. You'll get some introductory emails and then all the activities will start on June 5th. plainenglish.com slash GPT. Blow over is a phrasal verb we use when there's some kind of conflict, controversy, argument, or tension. And we say something will blow over if we think it will end soon, if it will resolve itself in a little bit of time. So think about a storm a heavy thunderstorm right over your house. Eventually, it stops raining, right? How does that happen? Do you go outside and fight the storm? Is there anything you can do to make it stop? No, you just go inside and wait for it to end. The storm moves on and rains on someone else's house and you didn't have to do anything. The wind carries the storm clouds away. And in that case, in that literal case, we say a storm blows over. The wind carries the storm clouds away and the sun comes out again. The storm blows over. After a short time, the unpleasantness ends and it happens all by itself. So that's what I want you to think about when we talk about blow over in the context of a controversy or an argument. It just ends all by itself in a little bit of time, and it doesn't cause lasting damage. Executives at AB InBev are hoping this happens to the controversy over Bud Light. Consumers of all stripes are mad at the brand over a sponsored video from a trans influencer. First, people who are uncomfortable with trans visibility and gender diversity were upset that their beer brand was featured on a trans influencer's Instagram video. Then the brand sort of apologized. And now people who support trans rights feel abandoned. Now they're mad at Bud Light too. So everyone, it seems, has a reason to hate Bud Light. This is still America's number one selling beer. Will the controversy blow over? That's the question on everyone's mind. Will this controversy just end? Will people get all upset about Bud Light today, but then forget about their anger tomorrow or a few weeks from now? Will people move on to the next cultural outrage in a few weeks' time? Will they go back to their old drinking habits? In other words, will this controversy blow over without causing long-term damage to Bud Light? There's certainly reason to think that it will blow over. It's easy in the age of social media to get all worked up about a brand and what it may or may not have done. But people are creatures of habit. They don't change their long-term behavior easily. So these things tend to blow over. These controversies end after a few weeks or months, and everyone forgets them. Do you remember airport security dragged a passenger off a United Airlines plane. That was in 2017. This was a fail on so many levels. 
They let a passenger board the plane, but they needed his seat so that crew could get to a different airport. And the passenger was a doctor. He needed to see patients the next day, and he refused to give up his seat when the airline asked him to get off the plane. Security intervened. His face hit an armrest. He appeared to be knocked unconscious. And then, this was the shocking part, they just dragged him unconscious down the aisle and off the plane. He was a doctor. This was bad. I mean, this was just really bad. They knocked a customer unconscious and then dragged him off a plane. And it was their own mistake that caused this situation. They let him on the plane when they needed his seat to move crew members to a new city. Well, three days after the videos circulated online, a poll showed that 79% of prospective flyers said they would not choose United Airlines. Almost half said they would fly another airline even if it meant paying more and spending more time in the air. There were congressional hearings. There were lawsuits. Comedians made jokes about it on television. You know what happened? It blew over. It ended. It did not cause lasting damage. United Airlines is just fine. From what I can tell, they even gained market share since the incident. All right, it was bad. They suffered. The CEO took a different job. They paid a settlement. They apologized left and right. Their reputation took a hit. But the controversy blew over. It just ended. It was bad for a while, and then it ended. A fight or argument between two people can blow over. Time cures all. Well, maybe not all, but time cures a lot of things. If two family members are in a fight, you might just wait a few weeks to see if their argument blows over. It might just end with the passage of time. Tensions is a funny word. It means when two people, countries, or organizations have a strained relationship. It's like less than a fight, less than a controversy, just a little general discomfort. And you sometimes describe tensions between two countries. There are tensions between the U.S. and Mexico over the border right now. The U.S. is concerned about the amount of fentanyl crossing the border. Mexico is concerned about the U.S. overstepping its authority in drug enforcement. So that leads to tensions. That leads to discomfort and annoyance on both sides. Will the tensions blow over? Possibly. It's possible both sides will enjoy being upset with one another for a while, but they'll find a way to work together in the future. Today's song of the week is Seasons by B.B. Rexa, featuring Dolly Parton. This is a new song, but it has a folk country vibe. B.B. Rexa said she grew up listening to Dolly Parton, and they collaborated on this song. They sing it together in duet form. The video is good, too, black and white and it cuts from B.B. Rexa to Dolly Parton and back again. It's a good video and a good song. 
Dolly Parton, by the way, is 77 years old. She looks and sounds good in the video too. So check that out, Seasons by BB Rexa featuring Dolly Parton. And that's all for today. Remember, chat GPT challenge, plainenglish.com slash G, chat, ah, plainenglish.com slash GPT. That's it, plainenglish.com slash GPT. Time is running out. Your fellow listeners who have already signed up, they've gotten some bonus material already to get started, to get warmed up. So I don't want you to miss out on anything else. It officially starts on June 5th. Go to plainenglish.com slash GPT to get started. See you back here with a new lesson on Monday.